Hi everyone, I'm Kai Shin. Today, my group member and I are going to present about electromagnetic compatibility in cochlear implants. First of all, I would like to start with electromagnetic wave. Electromagnetic waves are formed when an electric field coupled with a magnetic field. As you can see here, the blue line indicates the electric field and then the red line indicates the magnetic field. The electric field and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other and to the direction of wave. Next, how fast do you think this electromagnetic wave propagate? The answer is, it propagates with the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meter per second, where c is equal to f times lambda. c is the speed of light, f is the frequency, and lambda is the wavelength. Example of electromagnetic wave, well, we can get the answer through the electromagnetic spectrum diagram. Okay, we see here radio wave, infrared wave, and even light is also one of the electromagnetic waves. And then we have UV light, X-ray, and gamma ray for the example of electromagnetic wave. Since frequency is proportionally to lambda, so if the frequency is increasing this way, then the wavelength is increasing this way. Electromagnetic compatibility Electromagnetic compatibility means that a device is compatible with its electromagnetic environment and it doesn't emit level of electromagnetic energy that cause electromagnetic interference with other devices. As we all know, all electronic devices have the potential to emit electromagnetic fields. So, there is a huge potential for devices to interfere with other devices. In this assignment, we set our target market as medical equipment in healthcare sector, one of the largest and fastest growing industries in the world. There are many industries under the healthcare sector, such as drugs, medical equipment, medical facilities, etc. And we focus on medical equipment. Cochlear implant is the medical equipment we will explain. So, cochlear implant. As you can see, cochlear implant is a device surgically implanted inside the head which sends sounds information to the cochlea using electric pulses from an electrode. These implants help hard of hearing people to hear. The problems of uh, cochlear implants uh, in regards of compatibility with the electromagnetic waves. Um, but first of all, obviously MRIs always create problems. The magnets are too powerful. Um, too strong for us to handle. So they create a problem with people who already have little inner magnets within their head. Uh, next problem, radiotherapy. You know, ionizing radiation, not the best thing to have. It is obviously not great if the magnet absorbs a lot of uh, ionization. Not like an uh, impact. Alright, um, next, mobile phones. Um, so now we're not in healthcare anymore, we're not going straight to our mobile phones. They have um, a very specific issue which is noise. When do you can see uh, when, it, when this gets close to the impact, it does create like, interference. Um, makes the impact add a bit of un unneeded, unnecessary static noises. Um, and this makes the overall conversation over a phone hard to hard to listen to, hard to understand, hard to hear. Um, next, and the generic sources of electromagnetic radiation, um, such as TSA, good TSA counter, gate, um, you go to it, it will 
probably for PDD and messaging in advance. Alright, so now moving on to mobile phones. Um, when you bring a mobile phone close to um, the inner part of the implant, there, there's going to be some interference, some incompatibility. The, phone, the mobile phone's um, screen, battery, they kind of they create a bit of interference, giving and making it hard to hear um, the call on the other end. You know they don't play well together. Now, what did they have, what did they do in ye olde times? Well, in the past they used a telecall phone. Some Nokia phones had a telecall inside the phone, and you had a telecall in your ear, in the implant, and then they can communicate. But you know, you'd have to switch to telecall mode and switch back to non-telecall mode, depending on what the situation is. Yeah, it gets tedious. The manual method, which is keeping the phone close enough to hear, but far enough to not interfere with the implant itself. Uh, the new way is pretty simple, pretty cool. You can get a neck loop, you could neck an aux cord to the neck loop, and then the 3.5mm, and then the other end to, the tri uh, to your phone uh, via 3.5mm headphone jack, and then you get you know, direct audio to your implant. And the neck loop just connects your implant wirelessly, uh, and that works as well. Or you can uh, use Bluetooth. Uh, Bluetooth technology is you know a thing now. Every phone should have it, and directly connect your audio with Bluetooth. That's cool. In the past, we'd have to do a five-step plan to get an MRI scan performed on a cochlear implant patient. Usually, all you have to do is go in, get the MRI scan done, get out. But for a cochlear implant patient, they have to do it differently. They got five steps to follow. They gotta remove the implant, get the MRI scan, then they gotta wait for the procedure, what to do next, then they gotta get that procedure done. Then they have to re-implant the cochlear implants back into their heads, which you know, is exhausting, takes a lot of time. You have to perform two surgeries, which just increases the chances of getting an infection. So you know, there's some things we can do to mitigate that, and one of those things is getting an MRI compatible cochlear implant. Uh, basically, something that would be you could go into you could go into an MRI with this implant in your head, and it would be fine. You wouldn't have to remove it. No surgery done. You can operate it like a human being who doesn't have an implant in their head. But these implants have some caveats, which is they can go up to 1.5 teslas or 3 teslas, depending on what kind of implant you have. Uh, numerous ways of getting it to work. Uh, one of them is getting the, the magnet, the inner magnet inside the inner cochlear implant, to freely move according to the MRI's magnetic waves, so it doesn't interfere with the wave. It doesn't act upon the wave, so it won't get pulled out of your skull, it will just stay there. Uh, another thing would be to we get removable inner magnets, uh, which makes a bit, fair bit uh, easier to get surgery a bit. In, remove the magnet, just the magnet, you can keep, leave the implant there. You still have to go through the five step plan, but it is a bit simpler to just remove the magnet instead of the whole implant. And next, we are going to talk about the competitor analysis. As we all know, there are so many companies that are providing cochlear implants in the market. And today, we are going to talk about the top three companies that are providing the solution. The first one is Advanced Bionics, owned by the Sonova Holding from Switzerland. This company is previously known as the Fona Holding. And the second one is the Cochlear, owned by the Cochlear Limited from Australia. And the third one is the Mad L from Austria. The table shown is the comparison chart between the cochlear implants provided by these three companies. For the model part, for Advanced Bionic, Hi-Res Ultra 3D is the latest model. And for the cochlear, the latest model is CI532 Slim Modular. And for the Mad L, the latest one is the Synchrony. There are some features about the cochlear implant for these three companies. And we will make a summarize at the UEP part. So 
the last one we are going to talk about the UEP from three companies. The first one, Advanced Bionic. This company focuses on innovation and creative in order to create the newest and the latest technology to lead the market. Their cochlear implant have the highest input dynamic range which able to increase the performance of cochlear implant. Their cochlear implant also have the highest temporal resolution that provide up to 83,000 pulses per second. The second company is the Cochlear Limited. This company estimate to have the highest market share among other companies. Their cochlear implant also have the most pattern compared to other companies. This company focus on reliability. They want their patient to use the device for the lifetime. They don't want their patient to do the second or third time surgery in the future. The third company is the MedL. This company invented the world's first microelectronic multi-channel cochlear implant in 1977. This company focused in MRI's problem. They designed the first cochlear implant that compatible with 1.5 and 3.0 Tesla MRI scans without removing the magnet from the cochlear implant device. Besides, this company also introduced the EAS system, the world's first hearing implant system for combined acoustic and electric stimulation. There are some weakness from these three companies. For the first one, Advanced Bionic, the cochlear implant sales are quite weak compared to other companies. The product, include the implant and sound processor, are heavier compared to other companies, which might give lesser comfort to the patient. The second company is the Cochlear Limited. The financial planning for this company is not done properly and efficiently. Therefore, they need more investment in order to create new technologies. Regarding to the product, they need to remove the magnet of implant before using the MRI scan. And the magnet might also force off in ear canal in daylight, which might lead to a serious problem for the patient who use it. The third company, MedL. The cochlear implant from this company have lesser channel compared to the other's company. That's all from us. Thank you for watching our video.